Welcome to section 4.2.1 part 2. We needed just a little more time to finish the last problem. I didn't want to try to finish it in 10 seconds. This is going to focus on problem 469. And in 469 we did the following graphs. We basically looked at these graphs and tried to figure out a story for them. Um, if you have not already done so and you have the book, I would encourage you to do that now and pause the video. And then I'm going to give you some of the interpretations we had in class. Okay. Okay. In this video, or not video, this uh, particular graph, they... Um, are given as two cities, Rio de Janeiro, which is in Brazil in South America, so they have seasons opposite ours, and San Francisco. I made one change in class. I said instead of time of year in spring, I said maybe we'll change this to um, the months of March through the months of um, May. Okay, because that will work better for the seasons in the two places. Remember here, we're going from fall to winter. And here we're going from spring to summer. Because the seasons are opposite. So my story started out something like what I just said. Well, in San Francisco, they're in the northern hemisphere. They're going from spring to summer, so I would expect the temperatures to go up. The temperature is going up. Okay, in Rio de Janeiro, I would expect the temperature to start in the fall, because the end of summer, to be high, and as we approach winter, to go down. Now, they ask us then to explain what the intersection point means. And the intersection point, right here, has two properties, or two values. It has a time of year value, so they have the same day, we're going to say, And right here, we're going to say that going this way, they have the same temperature. So I would say that that intersection represents the day of the year when they have the same temperature, basically in the spring or fall for their particular part of the world. Okay, the next one was tricky, but basically this was the explanation, and we will give... Um, you a little moment for that. On this one, we're going from the number of tortillas manufactured, so this is probably like zero, and this is like a really big number. And then we're going from the cost maybe being zero to a big number here, being big number of dollars. So we have two types of lines here. One line represents the machine made, the other represents the handmade. And the th conclusion we came up with is that you have to buy a machine at the very beginning. So you have to pay thousands of dollars for your machine. Well, as you make more and more tortillas, the cost of the machine becomes less and less because you're kind of averaging it into the number of tortillas you made. So that means that your cost is going down. But if you're having people make them, you hire them and you pay them a certain amount, and it's pretty consistent all the way through. Now, this is an important interpretation graph because its intersection represents the place where the number of tortillas made and the cost to make them are the same for handmade and machine made. How would you use that? Well, if I had company that made very few tortillas or I was making them at home, it's not worth it to buy a machine because I can make them cheaper than I can have a machine make them. But at some point, it becomes cheaper to have the machine make them. And so whatever value this number here was or is, that's where I would start considering the purchase of a machine instead of having them all be handmade. Okay, the next graph had pollution and population, the number of people and the population. Once again, starting at zero, getting bigger, 
starting at zero and getting bigger. Well, this tells me that Boston started out with a very little population, and it got bigger and kind of leveled off. And Denver started with a higher population. It isn't growing as much in population, but it's not growing very much in pollution either. And so my story was is that Denver has pretty much stayed the same and their pollution is about the same. But Boston has grown a lot and it's a bigger city and so it produces more pollution. The intersection of these two lines is very interesting to newspapers and statisticians because it's the point where Denver and Boston had the same number of people and they had the same amount of pollution. So if I was a newspaper writer, I might say that this was when this was when suddenly Boston became the dirtier city or Denver became cleaner. Not cleaner, but not as dirty as Boston. Okay. Now, the next one goes back to the story of the tortoise or the hare. We all seem to remember that one, I hope. There was a tortoise and hare and the hare, the rabbit, thought he could beat the tortoise or turtle and he didn't have to do much so he just kind of waited around for a while and took a nap and then he suddenly took off. That's why the hare's line right here is starting later. He started later but from the beginning or the, the starting line. The tortoise kept going. Two interesting things. It tells me that the tortoise, because the line isn't as steep, went slower and the hare went faster. Well, if one of them's going faster, even if it starts later, there's a good chance it'll eventually catch up. And it caught up before the end of the race. And so, this point right here represents when the hare and the tortoise met, which means when they were at the same time and they were at the same distance from the starting line. And so those were our stories for that. A couple of big ideas to revisit. We wanted to talk about what does it mean when two lines meet? Well, it's where two ideas um, have something in common. We solved by graphing, so we found out where they intersected by graphing, and we interpreted some of the graphs, gave you some examples of that, and we also um, graphed some lines from rules. Remember that when we have more than one rule on a page or on a graph that we're trying to find out where they have something in common, we call that a system of equations. And I hope this helps, and good luck.